Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and welcome to the Game Week 25 episode of Buy, Sell, Keep, Avoid. Now guys, admittedly, last game week, some of my shells ended up going a little bit amiss. So I'm going to do my best, I'm going to try so hard to make sure that this video makes up for it with some really, really good FPL shouts that are going to make up for the kind of not so good shouts that I kind of made last game week. We're going to do better, I'm going to try my best, we're going to do better. Surely, surely. Also, guys, if there is anything that is kind of out of date in this video, I do apologise. I am actually recording this on Thursday before the Thursday evening games. So if anything changes, it shouldn't do realistically. But if anything changes uh, through those two, uh, you know, other Arsenal and the Liverpool games this evening, then... You know, that's why, because I'm recording beforehand. But there you go, guys. If you do enjoy what you see today, please do leave a like. Would massively appreciate that. Really helps out the channel. And do subscribe as well. Without further ado, let's talk about the rules of buy, sell, keep, avoid. So buy the players you probably don't have, but should consider bringing in. Sell the players you probably have, but should consider removing. Keep the players you probably have. You might be thinking about removing them, but I think you should keep them. And avoid the players that are pretty hyped up right now. A lot of people going for them, but I think you should actually avoid them because they are traps. That is how this video works. So guys, without further ado, let's start you off with two beautiful buys. So our first buy is Bruno Fernandes. Now, although Man United have been pretty disappointed recently, to say the least, uh, they do have a double game week this week. Southampton and Brighton at home seems like a reasonably decent double. And even if you don't think United will dominate both games, there are clearly some points up for grabs here, which is why Bruno springs to mind immediately in terms of key players for game week 25. And he would also be my ideal captain pick for the game week as well. Now, there's a few reasons for this. Firstly, he is more nailed on than any other United attacker, Ronaldo, Rashford, Sam Sancho, Alanga, Cavani, they all have a chance of playing just one of the two games. So with Fernandez, you're looking at four points as a realistic worst case scenario. Add a clean sheet point in one game, then that's another point maybe. And then you can start thinking about those attacking returns even after that. So Bruno, again, is leading the pack in terms of goal involvement among United players. Ronaldo has him slightly beat on goal scoring probability, but Fernandez kind of more than makes up for that with the significantly more creative uh, Naus kind of thing. He's also an absolute bonus point magnet, which is just so important in those double game weeks since you get two chances to collect bonus points rather than the max bonus points being three. It is now six for Bruno. And considering that Bruno collects these bonus points so easily because of his style of play, it's kind of suited to the bonus point system. He could simply get an assist in each game and still imagine uh, like kind of manage six bonus. That wouldn't be a monster haul without even having to score a goal. And for those of you who don't own Salah yet, Bruno is a nice one game week placeholder before you bring in Salah. That way you get to captain Bruno for his double in 25, and then you move to Salah and captain him in his double in 26. So yeah, even though United in general don't look like a great team at the moment, they're certainly not a team to go all in on just for the sake of one double game week. But Fernandez presents a good FBL asset in a good double game week. And even if the team isn't quite as good, the player is, the double's good. So that's good enough reason. My next buy is Andy Robertson. Now, Robertson has kind of gone under the radar a little bit. It's a bit of a points machine at the moment. If you're looking for a second Trent in your team, look no further than the other side of the Liverpool defence. Per 90, Robertson is actually beating Alexander-Arnold in pretty much every metric recently. I'm not saying that one is better than the other on a kind of a longer scale, but at a time where there's no Reese James, there's no Alonso to be that super attacking fullback in our FPL teams, we have one right here. You know, we've got Trent, we've got Cancelo, and now we've got Robertson as well. Well, yes, he is kind of expensive for a defender, but I do expect him to dominate midfielders in terms of value for money. Great attacking statistics as well as the opportunity for clean sheets. And if you're looking for clean sheets, well, the next few games look pretty good, right? Burnley up next, a notoriously weak attack there. And then we've got a double versus Norwich and Leeds. You would say that on paper that the Liverpool defenders should feast in terms of both attacking and defensive returns over the next two game weeks. And Robbo is a great long-term hold too, since he's reasonably nailed on in this Liverpool team. Compared to Jota especially, who may find his minutes reduced later on in the season as he fights for starting spots with the likes of Firmino and now Luis Diaz too. 
There have been some calls among Liverpool fans for Simicast to get a bit of game time. I know you guys may be worried about that one. Uh, you know, I wouldn't worry about this too much personally. He, uh, Robbo might get the occasional rest, but it won't be kind of frequent enough to cause concern. It kind of seems like you know, Simicas, he's literally just had a little bit of game time in the in the FA Cup of the weekend. He's probably uh, Simicas is probably more of a cup player anyway. I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, but all in all, the double Liverpool defence kind of scary. Uh, but you know, we know that Trent and Robbo are FPL points machines, even without the clean sheets. On to some sales, we're going to start you off with Mikhail Antonio. Now, Antonio is the guy who it feels like is kind of almost impossible to sell at times. I myself only sold him for the first time all season last game week, and that was only because I was on a wild card. It's such a strange one. A lot of people have a lot of value tied up in him. He has some really good fixtures. Occasionally, he will raise our hopes with a rare assist or goal, but ultimately, we know that the way West Ham are kind of set up right now, the way West Ham play their football, is just not a set up that Antonio will really benefit from in terms of FPL points. He's not the shooter or goal scorer of the team. Bowen is. He's not even nearly the main creative force. Bowen, Fornals, Lanzini, Creswell, basically every other player in the team are creating more chances than Antonio as well. So we, we kind of know he's just not the best FPL asset to have, but we keep him. Also probably due in part to the fact that, you know, this is the worst year ever in terms of forwards, right? I'm sure, you know, that's part of the reason is that we just don't know who to go for instead. It's kind of that situation. But every couple of months, we kind of get that extra kick to remove Antonio. Now, this time, the kick is the double game week. Or in Antonio's case, a lack of a double game week with none likely any time soon. Maybe West Ham will get maybe one more double game week this season. But that's probably not going to be till like game week 35. Other options, however, despite being, uh, you know... Uh, a little bit crap as all forwards are at least have more opportunities to score points due to more fixtures and then you know that th we could we have to kind of look at how many points we can possibly get by going for someone slightly differently and i do think there are a few forwards that are putting up slightly better stats than antonio as well Veghorst looks really good. I think he could be a great asset. Uh, you know, he's got uh, plenty of upcoming double game weeks, hasn't he? Edouard, even though uh, Edouard might not be able to match Antonio's minutes, he still looks likely to outscore him in those limited minutes. Then there's also, you know, Broya, if you want a really cheap option. There's the expensive guys like, uh, you know, Harry Kane. Or you could even take out Antonio entirely and just use the money for your midfield. Either way, I don't think Antonio is the one right now. And I think the fact that he doesn't have a double game week coming up anytime soon, where so many other players kind of do, is a pretty good excuse to sell him. Next sell is Mason Mount. Well, last week I bashed on Rudiger as the Chelsea player to sell. It was, after all, the kind of the week of bringing in new defenders. But with so few clean sheets in game week 24 and so many juicy midfielders to choose from, I guess it's Mount's turn. So as we know, Chelsea have a bit of a problem with lack of fixtures. You may be able to survive with holding on to these Chelsea players on your bench for now. But unless you're planning on free hitting in game week 27, that game week is going to cause you a real problem. Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool and Leicester will all blank there uh you know considering we probably want triple liverpool for game week 26 that kind of leaves us with no availability to have any other chelsea arsenal or leicester players if we want to avoid you know fielding less than 11 players so what we're really looking at here is uh you know a single game week 26 where many other player uh, other players kind of double when many other teams double a blank either side of that for chelsea Midfielders like Bowen, the league's midfielders, Coutinho, Madison, Corne, Son, of course, they all look better, not just for the short term, but for the long term too. Chelsea's fixtures get a lot better from game week 28 onwards. In fact, they look insane from game week 28 onwards. Honestly, guys, I implore you to go and have a look at the Chelsea fixtures from game week 28. They're incredible. Start thinking about what Chelsea player you want to bring in right now. Um, but anyway, I, I just don't think... Mount is reliable even for those good fixtures after that either as an FPL asset. He's a serious rotation risk since Chelsea have a million winger options. And Chelsea don't score many goals either. So it feels like Mount's FPL potential is a little bit limited in this Chelsea team. So I'm not sure... Uh, you know, he's the one to go for at all. And I, I probably don't even need to keep talking about this one, to be honest, because they're just endless reasons to sell Mount or any other of your Chelsea, of your Chelsea attackers this week. So just go and do it. 
On to some keeps, we'll start you off with Cristiano Ronaldo. People are rage transferring out Ronaldo like crazy. Over 50,000 people and counting. Uh, transferring out a very good player right before his double game week. A player who takes some of the most shots of any player in the league, who is the focal point of their team. A player who has delivered already plenty of times this season. Again, this is another one of those transfers where it seems like people are letting emotion beat logic. Yes, super, super frustrating that Ronaldo didn't start against Burnley. But Cavani looked poor. United looked poor. The no Ronaldo experiment did not work out at all. And they had to kind of resort to bringing him onto the pitch later on in the game. Anyway, when that happened, every single Man United pass, every cross was di directed towards Ronaldo. The Ronaldo became the focal point. They kind of conceded, okay, maybe this needs to be the Ronaldo show after all. That happened midway through the game. United were desperate to get the ball to him. Now, we kind of go into this double game week where Ronaldo is actually far more likely to start than he, than he would have been if he started it against Burnley. He is now rested, so he can possibly play both games as well. I'm not saying Ronaldo will play both games in the double, but I do imagine he, even if he doesn't start one of the games, he'll come off the bench in, in the other. So start one and then come off the bench in the other. I really imagine he will get at least 100 minutes, 110 minutes across the two games. That's pretty good. That's easily enough time for him to bag a goal against two teams that aren't exactly top of the world defensively. Southampton can see a lot of chances and goals. Brighton can't seem to keep a clean sheet at the moment either. And people are kind of acting like Ronaldo must be removed from their teams right now. And then they'll sit there with Neil Morpay in their team. I understand that Ronaldo is not worth the money. And believe me, guys, he really is not not worth the 12.5 million. Uh, I understand he is not a player you want to own long term. He isn't. I get that. It's completely, completely acceptable. But for the sake of waiting one more game week, just to just see what he can do in that double game week, surely it's worth doing. Even if you think, you know, he's worth like 8 million. Okay, well, w would you play, would you pay a little bit extra for an 8 million player if you got an extra fixture for them? Maybe you would. I think it's worth waiting one more week. I really think that uh, one more week. My next keep is Jogo Jota. So although I said earlier about getting Robertson, I don't want this to be confused as sell Jota. I think Jota can still be a very useful FPL asset in the short term. And I, although I do expect his minutes to be greatly reduced when Diaz is fully integrated, he's probably still safe for now. So like I say, I'm recording this video before the game week 24 Liverpool versus Leicester game, but I'm guessing that Jota started and done quite well too. I think he'll start again against Burnley. And then in the double game week, he's probably good for 100 plus minutes across the two games. 100 minutes is fine for a forward, especially Jota. Jota is a player who takes so many shots, and the more minutes, the more shots he gets. The more shots he gets, the more goals he gets. He's still a great pick. From game week 28, that may start to change, arguably 27 since Liverpool blank in game week 27 anyway. But yeah, from game week 27, you could probably could probably say, all right, maybe we can start thinking about selling Jota from there. You may find that he's not worth his value so much. If you're if you're already tripled up, this could be an opportunity for you to switch Jota for Robertson kind of from game week 28 onwards. But for now, stick with what you've got. If you don't have Jota, consider Robertson for that long-term option. If you do have Jota, keep Jota. Could be pretty good for that double game week. It really could. On to some avoids. We'll start you off with Neil Morpé. I have just been dying for an excuse to put more pay in the avoid section of one of these videos. I don't think I've done it in about a year's time. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, more pay is kind of my mortal FPL enemy, the biggest troll player in my existence. And I'm not even going to lie to you. There is so much personal bias here. So I would completely understand if you were to just completely ignore my advice here. But more pay. Really? The guy hasn't exactly got a great goal scoring record. I know we could say the same about any other forward in the game, but he hasn't scored in six Premier League matches and he's making a goal contribution in less than 50% of his games. This would, in fairness, suggest that he may be able to get one return in a double game week, but I would not be surprised, kind of thing, if he got a seven or eight points in a double. I guess that's not too bad, but this could be matched easily by a single game week player too. And I don't even think that the two fixtures that, that Morpay has, that Brighton have, are that easy. You know, it's particularly from an attacker's point of view. Watford have conceded zero goals versus Burnley and just one goal versus this, you know, really good West Ham team since Hodgson arrived as manager. We do expect Watford to have improved a bit defensively. New manager, new defensive signings could be on the rise a little bit. And, and then United, that's a tough team to score against as well. So I would imagine that Brighton would score kind of 
you know, I don't think they could, they'll probably they probably won't score too many more than, than one goal in either of those games, really. Uh, you know, they could easily score zero in either of those games as well. And if I'm looking at who's the most likely goal scorer, my eyes are naturally drawn towards Trossard, McAllister, who's been in good form. Those are the players who are far more likely to score it or get something out of this game, you know, assists as well. The problem is also that you if you bought more pay, you'd be stuck with more pay for all the game weeks that you wouldn't want it. You know, no more doubles for Brighton after this one. Uh, a mid price striker kind of resigned to your bench across some tricky fixtures as well, and no more doubles. And finally, now that Welbeck is available, we could see Welbeck get some game time as well. We already saw it in the last Brighton double game week. More play, more pay plays one, Welbeck plays the other. Now, I know this avoids, you know, this, this, this kind of avoid is, is set up for a bit of an aged well, right? I get it, because I can easily see Morpé getting some points over the double. But I think if you look at how Morpé performs over, you know, a five-game week period from now, or look at the opportunity cost of using your transfer on him versus someone else, or think about the hit that you might have to take in the future to remove him from your team, overall, I just don't think it's worth, you know, going for Morpé for the sake of one you know, subpar, kind of, you know, below average, in terms of double game weeks, a kind of below average kind of uh, look here. Don't really think it's worth it, but, um, you know, that's just my opinion. And my second avoid, I don't think you guys are going to agree with either, because it's Jacob Ramsey. Now, I, I love Jacob Ramsey. I, I love the love that Jacob Ramsey is getting right now. I think he's a really great player. It's so exciting to see a homegrown talent bloom in this Villa side, despite all the money that they've invested in their midfield. If, I, if it wasn't for the double game weeks coming up, I would be all for going for Ramsey. But... I kind of feel like we have to think more about the doubling players. I could have easily put Coutinho in here as well, since Coutinho doesn't have a double game week anytime soon. But the fact that Coutinho is just so good at footy made me think, OK, we'll let Coutinho off. Maybe we'll pick on Ramsey. I know that kind of seems a little bit harsh, but for the record, I'm not interested in bringing either of those uh, Aston Villa midfielders in. I just think there are so many midfield options right now uh, that do have double game weeks coming up. It seems strange to pick one that doesn't. Even if you do think Ramsey is really good, which he is, right? Do you really think he's good enough to beat Rafinha times two? Is he twice as good as Rafinha in a game week? Is he twice as good as Elise in a game week? Is he twice as good as Martinelli in a game week? Can he outperform these players by two times their points? Uh, I don't. I kind of don't think so. And again, I'm not really bashing on Ramsey. If you do already have him, great. But going forward, I think there are just some better options. And I know you're probably looking at these fixtures, licking your lips as well, but... Newcastle are greatly improved. Watford are showing those signs of a vastly improved defence under Hodgson. And Brighton are always a pain for attackers as well. They're decent fixtures, don't get me wrong. But I know a lot of people kind of looked at these this run of fixtures for Villa and thought, oh my god, this, uh, this, this fixture list for, for Villa is absolutely amazing. You know, this is amazing. But if you look at the fixture list after the Leeds game... Leeds was kind of the easiest one, you know, Leeds and Southampton, they're kind of the easiest ones of, of the lot, you know, so overall I do like Ramsey, the price is good, he's a great budget enabler, and later on in the season when he's got some doubles, I'll probably bring him in, I would also recommend him if you guys are on a wild card, you know, especially if he continues to nail his spot down, but right this second, if you're talking about spending your transfers, it doesn't really feel like the right time to, to bring him in. It doesn't feel aggressive enough. Maybe that's an FPL play style thing. But I think with just one more week until the big game week 26 double, we do need to turn our attention to the players that do indeed double. So in summary, again, guys, I feel like we really need to focus on those double game week players and, you know, really attack this pretty aggressively. I'm not saying lose the plot with hits, but let's take advantage of the fixture rescheduling situation. In general, buy and sell players who double over the next two game weeks. Be willing to sell and avoid those with no doubles, but also be aware of creating deadwood in your team. Are these players you're happy to keep after their double? And can you actually see any single game week players that might outscore a double game week player as well? It's not always 100% black and white but those are I think some pretty helpful things to try and think about Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did find this in any way helpful or entertaining, please do leave a like on the video. It really does help out the channel so much. And please do subscribe if you're new around here as well and you want more FPL content in your faces. We've got my team selection video coming out tomorrow, so that'll be good. Um, you know, we'll get to see how well I how well I finish off game week 25, uh, 24, sorry, after a pretty tragic 23. 
three and 22. Those were bad game weeks. But I think I may have turned this one around. We'll find out after tonight's games. Um, you guys will know how well I've done already, I guess. But there we go. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for watching once again. And I will see you on tomorrow's video. See you later, mate. Bye-bye.